Hi there, let's go through these three indefinite integrals that will require us to use u substitution and also involve trig functions just to look a little scary. Give them a try yourself before watching the rest of the video. Let me know how it goes in the comments. I'm assuming you already know how to do u substitution and just need some practice. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing this integration method if you need a recap. Let's start with this one, integral of 8x cubed sine of x to the fourth. This function looks a little messy. It's definitely not an integral that you know off the top of your head, but a little bit of u sub will make this pretty easy. The question is, then, what should u equal? Perhaps u should equal sine of x to the fourth. You should quickly disregard that possibility because if we take the derivative of that, we're going to get a cosine, and there is no cosine here, so that's probably not going to work. If we let u be x cubed, the derivative of that is 3x squared, and there's no x squared here, so the choice that should jump out at you is u equals x to the power of 4. x to the fourth is the inside function here, and often that's the one you want with u substitution. And more importantly, its derivative is 4x cubed, and that is pretty close to what we have here in the integrand, so this is probably going to work. Taking the derivative on both sides, we arrive at du equals 4x cubed dx. Now, you could just solve this equation for dx, and then we could go ahead and rewrite this integral in terms of u, replacing dx with what we solved for, and that's always going to work, but sometimes you can do things a little more cleanly. In this example, I see I've got 4x cubed dx. In the integral, we have 8x cubed dx. So I'm just going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. That way, I'll have 8x cubed dx on the right, and it'll be really easy to make a clean substitution. So we'll have that 2du equals 8x cubed dx. Now I don't have to solve for dx. I see that 8x cubed dx equals 2du. So let's make the substitution and rewrite the integral in terms of our new variable u. This integral is going to equal sine of x to the fourth, but x to the fourth is u, so this is sine of u, and then everything that's left, 8x cubed dx, is equal to 2du. So then we write 2du. We might as well go ahead and take the 2 out of the integral, so we're just left with 2 times the integral of sine u du. Now, this is a really easy integral. I'll continue the string of equalities over here. Let's do the integration. What is the integral of sine u du? It's close to cosine, but it's not quite cosine because cosine's derivative is negative sine, which means we need to multiply this by negative 1. That way the negatives would cancel out and give us sine just like we want. So it's going to be negative cosine u, but we don't want to forget to multiply by that 2 that we brought in front of the integral. So let's write this as negative 2 cosine u, and of course this is plus c. And then we'll just put the expression for x back in place of u. So our final answer is negative 2 times cosine of u, but u is x to the power of 4, plus c. And that is the integral of 8x cubed sine x to the fourth. Here is our second integral. Hopefully you gave this one a shot. We'll do it using u substitution. So again, the question is, what should u be? Well, letting u equal something to do with cosine probably isn't going to work here because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and there's no negative sine anywhere in this integrand. So that's just going to make things messier. So then perhaps we should let u be this inside function, square root of x. You might not see it at a glance, but in fact, if we take the derivative of square root of x, we're going to get one half times 1 over the square root of x, and 1 over the square root of x is something that we have in the integrand, so that's actually going to work really well. Check it out if you don't believe me. 
will let u equal the square root of x. I think it's often a good idea to rewrite radicals and roots as rational powers, so I'll just write this as x to the power of 1 half. Now let's take the derivative on both sides, giving us that du equals, this is just power rule, 1 half times x to the negative half dx. And I'll just slide this over to the left a little bit so it's all in line. Now, 1 half x to the negative half dx is actually really close to what we have here in the integrand. In the integrand, we have 1 over the square root of x dx, and x to the negative half is 1 over the square root of x. So let me just work with this equation for a minute. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. And that's going to give me 2du on the left. And on the right, I've now gotten rid of the half. And I'm going to rewrite x to the negative half by sending it to the denominator. So it's going to become 1 over x to the 1 half, which is of course just 1 over the square root of x, and we've still got dx. Now we can make the substitution, because I've got 1 over the square root of x in the integrand, and of course dx, and that's what I've got here. It equals 2 du. Let's go ahead and change the variables. So this integral equals the integral of 1 minus cosine of the square root of x, but the square root of x, of course, is u, so that's 1 minus cosine u. What's left is 1 over root x dx, but we know that that is equal to 2 du. So I'll replace that with times 2 du. Now we'll go ahead and take the factor of 2 out of the integral. So this is 2 times the integral of 1 minus cosine u du, and this is easy now. Going ahead and evaluating this integral, we've got our factor of 2, and then what's the integral of 1 minus cosine u? Well, just think of it in parts. The integral of 1 is going to give us u, because we're integrating with respect to u, so don't make it x, it's u here. And then we have to subtract the integral of cosine. And the integral of cosine is just sine. So that's nice and easy. And then we've got our plus c. Now we just got to go ahead and replace u with what we set it equal to, square root of x. So our final answer, this integral is 2 square root of x minus 2 times the sine of square root of x. I just distributed the 2. And then, of course, plus c. And that is the integral of 1 minus cosine root x all over root x. And here is our last integral. What you should notice here is that secant tangent is the derivative of secant. So this would be a really easy integral if only the 1 over thetas and 1 over theta squareds weren't here. So let's try to get rid of those with a u substitution. If I let u equal 1 divided by theta, the derivative of 1 divided by theta is a multiple of 1 over theta squared. So this is going to work really well. See it in action here. Taking the derivative on both sides gives us du equals negative theta to the power of negative 2 d theta. If you don't see that, just remember that 1 over theta is the same as theta to the negative 1. So this derivative is just a simple power rule. Now, theta to the negative 2 d theta is what we have in the integrand. But right now in this equation, I've got this factor of negative 1. So I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 to get that negative du equals 1 over theta squared. That's just rewriting that. d theta. Now it's easy to make the substitution. 1 over theta squared d theta is what we've got in the integrand, and we just found out that's equal to negative du. Now we can change the variables. So this integral is equal to the integral of secant of 1 over theta, which is just u, times tangent of 1 over theta, which is also just u. What remains is 1 over theta squared d theta, and we found that's equal to negative du. 
So we'll just write times negative du. We'll go ahead and bring that factor of negative one out of the integral. So this is negative integral secant tangent du. Now this is super easy. This is just an integral you have to know. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. So the integral of secant tangent is secant. So this is negative secant of u and plus c. Just replace u with what we set it equal to and our final answer is negative secant of one over theta plus c. That is the integral of one over theta squared secant tangent of one over theta. All right, hopefully you found that practice useful. Of course, you've got to know your trig derivatives in order to make these antiderivatives easy. And for u substitution, you should be thinking about it when you see an integral with the product of functions, and one of the functions is the derivative of one of the others, or just a multiple of the derivative of one of the others. For example, here we had 8x cubed, which is a multiple of the derivative of x to the fourth. That was was our sign to use u substitution. Down here, 1 over the square root of x is a multiple of the derivative of square root of x. Use u substitution. Down here, 1 over theta squared is a multiple of the derivative of 1 over theta. Use u substitution. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Keep